Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part two in the enemy pathfinding tutorial series. I don't know how many episodes this series will have, but I figured I'd just expand this a bit because some of you were asking questions on how to do enemy avoidance. So in this video, I'll just be showing you how to set up enemy avoidance. And in future videos, I might teach you how to incorporate different things like animation and more in-depth states for how the enemies will react in your world. But either way, let's just get right into it. So if you haven't watched the previous Previous video, I would recommend watching that as it will help you set up everything that I currently have in my project here. And after you have the project set up, we're going to start out by going into the navigation agent inside of the enemy scene right here. And you can see that there's an option inside of here in the avoidance category. And we want to go ahead and click that. And what it'll basically do is using the radius value, it will scan in a circle around the navigation agent and it will detect any other navigation agent agents that are currently on the pathfinding server and you can use all this data which you can set to basically find a safe vector which the enemy in this case can move along without colliding with any other objects that are also navigating. So the first value we want to look at is the radius. Keep in mind that this is the radius for the collision which it will try to avoid things with. So you typically want to set this to the same size of your collision shape. So in my case, it would be 16, which is the radius of the collision shape here. And then the neighbor distance is the range that it searches for other entities to avoid. So we can just keep this as is by default. And then the max neighbors is exactly what it sounds like. This is the maximum amount of entities it will essentially take into account when it's trying to avoid them. You typically want to keep this pretty low, but depending on how many enemies are in your game, you might need to set this a bit higher. This will increase the cost of performance by quite a bit, so just keep that in mind. And then we have the time horizon. So the time horizon is basically the time it will take to predict the compensation of motion around whatever it's trying to avoid. We can just keep this at one second. And then the max speed is the maximum speed in pixels that the enemy, in this case, can move. So we're going to keep this at the same speed we have our enemy defined as. My enemy is currently moving at 100 pixels a second. So inside of our navigation agent, we're going to keep it at 100 pixels a second just to keep everything uniform. Now, once we have all the values inside of the avoidance adjusted, we want to go into the node tab and we want to select the velocity computed signal to the enemy script. So go ahead and connect this and we should have it pop up here at the bottom of the script. And this will essentially send a signal when our safe velocity is computed inside of the avoidance algorithm. So how we use this is we need to set the velocity of our navigation agent. And then at the end of the frame, it will compute if the velocity we passed in is valid. And if it isn't, it'll calculate its own velocity and then pass it back to us which we can use to actually call the move and slide function. So we basically have to do a bit of surgery in the code here. So we're going to scroll up into our physics process and we're going to delete this line of code right here where we adjust the velocity. We're also going to delete the move and slide function. And after we get the axis of the direction we want to move, we're going to make a new variable called intended velocity. And we're going to set this equal to axis multiplied by speed. So this will basically be the intended velocity that we want to move. And then this will get passed into our navigation agent by calling navigation agent dot set velocity. And we're going to pass in the intended velocity. Now, once our navigation agent gets this velocity, it will calculate if the velocity is valid or safe, like mentioned before. And then down inside of our signal that we connected, we're just going to add a couple lines of code here. So first, we need to set our velocity, which is built in to the safe velocity. And then we just call move and slide and everything should work correctly from there. So before I test the game here, I'm also going to increase the de-aggro range of these enemies just so that it's easier to test stuff out. And then I'm also going to disable collision shapes during runtime. And then we're gonna run the game here. You can get all these enemies aggroed. And then it's kind of hard to see with this amount of enemies in this map setup, but they will take into account the other enemies and try to go around them instead of just pushing straight towards my player. So you can see that they're kind of surrounding me here um, to try to get as close as possible, which um, in this case, it makes the player get stuck. But overall, the enemy avoidance is working with one another. 
and this should make your enemies just react a bit more dynamically with how the world is set up. Now, another thing you'll notice is if an enemy is pushing the player, um, there are some times where they will literally just move the player, and you obviously don't want that. So in the next video in this series, we're going to work on fixing that so that the enemies will not move the player, and we'll also implement something to make the enemies kind of target a position relative to the player so that they can kind of position themselves if you wanted to do attacks or something, and then they aren't going straight to the player's origin point. But that will be in the next tutorial, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. Unless it's already released, you can go ahead and watch that. But that's about it for this video. If you did enjoy the video or learned something new, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. But with that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.